Okay, we are live. It is live Friday here at the Frugal Crafter YouTube channel. I want to welcome everybody here for another painting tutorial. The pattern and the uh, reference photo, not the reference photo, but the picture of the completed painting is on my blog, frugalcrafter.wordpress.com. If you want to, um, and there's a link in the video description if you want to scroll down and, and click on over. So you can um, download those and transfer them onto your paper if you want, or you can sketch it freehand, whatever you would like to do. I do want to let you know this video is sponsored by Jerry's artorama.com you can find all the supplies that I'm using today as well as pretty much anything you can even imagine at Jerry's artorama.com and I thank them for their support they'll also be linked up in the video description all the products that I use today we're going to use Turner watercolors and um, now the the picture that I shared on my blog was um, the final picture I actually did that with student grade colors these are artist grade colors so this painting will probably even come out better but um, I just wanted to let you know you can use whatever you have even if it's just Crayola watercolors and Crayola watercolor pencils it doesn't matter that much you really should just paint and try and it's the artist not the materials that makes the artwork we're going to start by wetting the background. I did want to show you how I put my paper. I'm actually using a, um, a block of Canton Monfil watercolor paper that's bigger than my design, but I thought it might be kind of pretty to actually put it on my paper this way and then use this extra space, I don't know, to put like an art journal quote or a poem or something fun like that. But you can put it on a smaller paper, put it whatever size you want. I'm going to start by wetting the background. And you want to wet everything except for the flower itself, just with clear water. If you hear any um, tapping or jingling, it's the dogs. Oh, by the way, can everybody hear us? I forgot to ask. Yes, uh, they say that they can see you. Nobody said anything about hearing you. Oh, can you guys Can you guys hear me? Oh. And I'm here with Sarah. She is moderating the comments Hi, today. Hi, good, uh, good afternoon, everybody. So happy. Who's here, anyway? Who's we got JPG 13 Arts, Abigail Vander Poochum, Tim Tim Seven. Uh, they can hear us. Yay! Awesome. I always I see the levels on my on my screen, but you never quite know. I am just using my brush to kind of go around and use whatever your largest flat brush is. I know you may not have. This is probably about a three quarter inch wide. It's a number twenty. Mimic Kalinsky brush by Creative Mark. They are a very absorbent synthetic brush, so if you want to have the um, workability of a Kalinsky brush, but you don't want to have animals harmed, or you just don't want to pay the crazy prices for a real Kalinsky brush, these are an excellent, um, an excellent uh, substitute. And I don't like to use um, natural, natural brushes that come from the fur trade, so I'm really happy with these. So take your time here because the paint is only going to flow where the paper's wet. And if you're confused whether you wet your paper or not, just like, can you see that how there's like no shine there? I totally didn't get that area. You just want to make sure that you've wet everywhere that you want your paint to flow. I'm not going to worry too much about the top of this paper because that's really not what, what uh, I'm here to show you today. And you can use a spray bottle as long as you can spray it so that you don't hit your flower. So is everyone in chat all done the Christmas shopping? Christmas, I am. Sarah's all done. She's very excited. Oh, I'm not. <laughs> I don't even have my Christmas cards out yet. <laughs> Christmas card. I got my Christmas cards out. My tree is up. My presents are wrapped and underneath the tree. So I'm kind of excited. Good for I you. Got big stuff done this year. Awesome. Well, I decided I am not buying anything that doesn't give me that heck yeah, you know, feeling. If I don't feel like, whoa, this person's going to love it, I'm not getting it. I'm not going to get things just to get things. I'd rather give a gift card than do that just because I don't want to cause clutter in people's lives. It cause stress in my life. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, Nicole Peary doesn't do Christmas. Oh. Uh, Steph Stephanie Griffin has not got her Christmas stuff done yet. Uh, Carrie Hare has a few tidbits, but no wrapping. Oh, I gotta get on the wrapping too. Uh, oh, Rogue Master twelve twenty four done before December even started. Oh, we are not worthy, Rogue Master. We are not worthy. <laughs> And Shelly Parchman, I think I was just drafted to paint some small watercolors for a Christmas present. <laughs> <laughs> That'll happen. That'll happen once you once people know you can paint. I'm using some sap green here on the lily pad area. 
it will bleed out that's no big deal so don't worry about that you can don't even have to be careful around here it can bleed out into the pond area I'm working around the flower first so I can kind of dry out and go right over these are water droplets these little circles here you can go right over those I'm gonna add a little bit of yellow ochre and um, I sprayed my palette because I let my, my paints dry in my palette and I sprayed it with some water about a half an hour before I began painting. It really helps uh, liquefy your paint and get them ready to go. So if you find that maybe you're, you're using a student grade paint or your paint just isn't um, as juicy as you'd like it, just spritz it a little like, you know, when you're getting ready to do your painting, you know, just spritz it, then set up the rest of your stuff. And by the time you're sitting down ready to paint, it should be ready to work as well. I also want to throw a little bit of the uh, let's see what's this yellow it is um, permanent yellow according to Turner I would call it a cad yellow if you are using um, another brand I'm just gonna throw a little bit of that in the middle of my lily here because I'm gonna need that color underneath for some techniques I'm gonna do in a little bit so you can go ahead and do that too and I am gonna use some colors that I don't typically use I am going to use some sap green with some phthalo blue and it's going to give me a nice, I'll mix it up here on my palette so you can see, it's going to give me a nice, um, oh, gorgeous kind of inky, well, let's see, it's, it's a very natural looking blue because of the sap green, but it's just got this really, um, I don't know, it's almost like a lagoon color, I guess. I don't know how to explain it. Tropical. Yeah, it is kind of tropical, tropical. yeah. And since my paper's wet, I'm just kind of throwing it in here and there, and then I'm going to mix in some other colors. Uh, encouraging hope. Thanks for doing this painting, Lindsay. I've been trying to trying some of the water lilies on PMP, so this is great. Oh, great! And that's Paint My Photo. And for those of you that um, that haven't gone to Paint My Photo in a while, that's a great website where photographers share their paintings and let artists paint them um, uh, without royalties or anything. The artists can do whatever they want with their paintings when they're done. And you don't, you know, that's. If you want to sell your work or you want to get your work, you know, printed, you don't want to just go on Google and search, you know, whatever and paint it because that photographer owns rights to that. And the, the photographers on Paint My Photo have given um, permission for artists to use their photographs in that purpose, even if you're illustrating a book. So it's really, um, it's a really wonderful service. And it's PMP dash art.com if you're looking for it. I do have a link on the sidebar of my blog to that and another website I found that had really nice um, reference photos that were royalty free and free to use. So just a little just a little research I have done and found that was very helpful to me in my arting. My uh, my paint wants to dry. You can always just kind of spritz it too. Spritz here if you have a nice large area. And I kind of like that that a uh, modely you see that kind of looks Kinda, I don't know, snowflakey there. Then you can give your palette another spritz if you need to. I want to put a little burnt sienna in that water because it is a little bright for um, for you know a pond. Ponds that can be kind of murky, but if you don't want to murk it up at all, you don't have to do it. I'm just gonna throw in little bits here and there. I do want to keep some of that bright, but I notice when you're trying to keep some bright colors, if you don't have a place for the eye to rest, it just is overwhelming and nothing looks vivid. You need that contrast, both contrast in val value, which is light or dark, and contrast in intensity. And intensity would be like how, the, uh, how saturated the color is. If you add a little brown to it, it kind of makes it a little bit grayed out and murky. And what, what I'm just doing off camera is I'm just pulling some of that that color to the top because I do think I might do a quote over that or something once it's dry in the future. I'm not sure. I like to keep that option open. But this brings another tip is if you um, only have if you're trying to figure out what size paper to buy and you want to have the option to work in different sizes, it's better to go with a larger block. You can always put like a piece of painter's tape here and uh, block off the area you want to use for one painting and then work then paint on the other end and then before you cut it off the block and uh, you can have that versatility. You can't make a smaller piece of paper larger, but you can make a larger piece of paper smaller. Do we have any questions in the chat while I'm waiting for this background to dry up a little bit? We don't. People are still talking about Christmas and Christmas cards and ideas for Christmas cards. We have uh, 
Joe Maysky is doing watercolor cards uh, this year for fr and for my friends who aren't into aren't as into the traditional Christmas imagery. I'm just using a favorite image of theirs. Oh, that's nice. Um, Shelly Parchman, Pinterest is a gold mine. I painted some simple ones with snowflakes and masking fluid and watercolor blue around it. Nice. That's a very, that's cool because that's a very quick and easy. Hmm. Well, I got a package, um, a Christmas present to myself. Finally, after ordering the scanning cut on uh, on the day after Thanksgiving, Black Friday, it finally arrived. I was thinking they were going to cancel my order, and I wasn't going to see it. Oh yeah. Did you have a chance to play with it? No, I haven't. It just came in. I made a little deal with myself that I need to get wrapping done before I. Because if I open that box, I might not come out till Monday. <laughs> it's gonna be a black hole. Oh yeah, in the house, it's just oh. And the kids are actually busy until about 8.30 tonight, so I need I, I have a great time to get some wrapping done and get a little housework done. I mean, the house is really – we've had basketball, like, every night this week, it seems like. Oh, it's, it goes downhill so quick. All right. I think I'm going to start – well, gosh, I still need to dry that a little bit. Do we have any other, any questions or any other chit chat going on? Um, well, Auntie Birdie has a scan and cut and loves it. Oh, good. No more fussy cutting. Uh, Jason, uh, how much is a scan and cut? Well, I found it, um, it can be anywhere really between, usually between about $230 and $399 or $499, depending on the model. I got, um, I'm not sure what the model number is, but it's a scan and cut too. And um, I got it on, at joanne.com on Black Friday for two fifty three, I think. So I hemmed and hawed, but then I'd wanted it for a while and I just decided to jump on it. So. Uh, Carrie Hare, will you do an unboxing on that scan and cut? And Kimson7 would like to see more about the scan and cut. Uh, Nicole Peary, Julie Fayfan Bowser's scan and cut lessons. She oh, I had her on the it. show. Yeah, she does. I had her on the, we did a live die cutting show and I had her on there and uh, yeah, she was very knowledgeable. Yeah. I have seen a few of her, of her videos, so. All right, I think I'm just going to go ahead and start working um, on the flower. Even though it's not perfectly dry, I suggest that if you are um, painting this at home, that you wait a bit and make sure everything's dry here. But I think I can get around and do some of these petals. I'm going to start by um, wetting around that yellow area and just adding um, in a little bit of my Meyer Red, which is kind of like, um, like a alizarin crimson type color. And I'm wetting the petals just so that they'll, the paint will flow a little bit. My dog is snoring. <laughs> well, it's not easy being Hazel. No, it isn't. It's got quite the life. All right. And I find that an angular brush is really handy because you can um, get the end of it in your paint and then you can keep the other, the other end pretty clean and then you can side load around. I'll show you what I mean in just a second. Just I, I did squeeze a little more paint on my palette because I was afraid I'd run out. And then like if you want, you can just kind of control. You can go around petals. Just get that really... Um, kind of even blush of color. And that's kind of what I'm going to do here. We're going to use watercolor pencils too to get a lot of uh, definition. You can see how quickly and easily you can get, you know, a very simple flower painted in this fashion. And that, that uh, clean edge of your brush makes the, um, makes the blend come out really smoothly. I don't know if you can hear that. The dog is lapping up water from the water bowl in the kitchen. We left the dog the door open because they get so distressed if we're in here and they are not. I know. Heaven forbid they're not in the same room with us. Yeah. It's very distressing. Always on the wrong side of the door. Poor dogs. Always. Finally got my mantle decorated. That that seemed to take forever to get done. I didn't even notice that when I came in. I guess I'll have to go take a look later. And probably too uh, noticing all the mess. <laughs> instead. No, no, no. So noticing the huge refrigerator box. <laughs> that, well, that's probably what it was like. Wow, look at all the boxes. 
Yeah, I really have to. I'm going to do some wrapping, though, because I have a lot of stuff downstairs. And I know the girls will want to probably do some crafty twin videos this weekend. And if I uh, if they start poking around in my studio, they're going to. Yeah. They're going to find some secrets. Oh. I actually had uh, the girls pick out. Um, I was doing some Black Friday shopping online, and I would call one over and say, "Hey, can you pick out some some clothes for your sister?" And then I had the other one do it. So at least they should like what they picked out for each other, even if they don't like. That's what. true. They can always swap. <laughs> yeah. Swap. Seriously. Um, Son, Gal, uh, Gal, Yo, Lindsay, what type of coloring pencils do you use? I use all kinds. Um, for watercolor pencils. Oh gosh, there's so many really good brands um, for watercolor pencils. I really like Derwent Ink Tents and the regular Derwent watercolor pencils. I like the Prima watercolor pencils. I like the um, these Aquatones, which we're going to use today because they're woodless, so there's like no waste. Um, there, there's a lot of really good ones. And for regular wax pencils, I really like Prismacolor, but most of my Prismacolor pencils are older and um, they're now made in Mexico. And I've heard that they, they break a lot more often. And even the older ones broke quite a bit because the lid was so soft. Um, so now I'm kind of recommending if you want a wax-based pencil, probably Derwent Color Soft is a is your best bet. And for a oil-based pencil, Faber-Castell Polychromos is a really good, um, a really good buy. All right, I'm going to use this Aquatone on my wet paper, and what I'm going to do is just kind of draw in some of the uh, veining lines. And since my paper is wet, it's going to pull the pigment right off of the stick. Well, coming up later tonight, I have a collab with Sarah from So Craftastic. She's got a fantastic DIY YouTube channel. So we'll have our craftiness videos up in a, uh, in a few hours. So that'll be something fun. It's a couple duct tape crafts we have coming up for you. Uh, do you have any tips for Windsor and Newton watercolor markers? I'm struggling with them. Um, let's see. I really, I thought they were, they're probably out of all the water-based markers I have, I think they're, um, the easiest to blend, but if you're having a hard time, make sure you're working on watercolor paper. That's going to make it so much easier. And, um, if you're really having a hard time blending, you can scribble it off onto like a, a white plate or a tile or a piece of plastic or something non-porous, and then you can pick it up with a clear blending marker. I've got one, I think I have one right here I can show you. They, um, they look like this. This one by, is by Tombow. Stampin' Up! makes a really good one, too. Um, but it's basically like a marker without color, but it's got glycerin and water in it, so it helps it helps your uh, pigment glide, and it's really good for blending those markers. Because sometimes with a water brush, you get too much, and it fills the paper. So that's a really good um, thing to try. And I don't know. I don't think Windsor Newton has a clear blender in their, um, in their watercolor marker line. And I, I was really happy. I bought probably about, I think... I think I got like I bought eight colors um, when they first came out or shortly after that and I really enjoyed using them I kind of wish I bought more because I got a really good deal at Jerry's on them like I think I paid like 260 a piece or something it was it was crazy now if your paper dries on you while you're doing this you can simply dip this in your water just for a second and then you can go back in and draw and you can soften these out with a damp brush if it gets a little too too liney. Older and dirt. Some of these watercolor techniques can be used with underglazes on ceramic greenware and then fired glazed and refired. Oh neat. I have not done uh, I haven't done ceramics in years. No. Now another cool thing that you can do with the um with the pencils is that you can use a brush and actually use the pencil like a palette and I've showed this before in some of my videos in case you're new um, you can actually just kind of pick the paint off from the tip just like that and then you can kind of go in and paint with it now I'm trying to I the um, on the sketch you see these little kind of points of yellow and those are the stamens in the middle i think they're called stamens in the middle of the flower so i'm just kind of painting around them with this really intense pink uh what do you think about neo color oops hang on oh, the chat popped up <laughs> uh, what do you think about neo color 
Is it two? Two? Or? Yeah. Oh, I two love two. them. Okay. That was Ola. Ola was asking. I've never even heard of them. They're, they're a watercolor crayon made by Karen Dosh. And they are fantastic. I remember when I got my set, I would, well, I had, a, I had a little set of them when I was a child, like a set of 10 or 15 or something. And I don't know how I ended up having them because, you know, they're kind of, maybe they weren't as expensive back then, but I mean, they're quite pricey. My parents probably found them at Martin's or something. But um, then when I was um, uh, an adult, I, I waited until they went on sale really good. And then I got the set of 84 for like 60 bucks. And I love them. The thing I really like about them is that you can work on like colored mat board and um, surfaces like that because they're opaque, but they blend really well. It's, they're just a really fantastic um, product. I'm actually putting some of this uh, crayon on my palette I think I want to use a little bit of that on my petals as well to kind of build up a little bit of dimension. And that's another reason these are so versatile because there's so much product in them. What kind of watercolors do you use? I use lots of different kinds. The kind I'm using today are Turner watercolors, and um, they're an exclusive product at Jerry's. The cool thing about Jerry's is they have so many, they have everything, every brand you could possibly think of, but they also do house brands, which are companies they've purchased, and um, this is one of the companies, and so they can make them at an extraordinary, extraordinarily cheap price because they don't have a middleman. They're not buying it from another factory and then um, reselling it. So this set, I'll show you here, it was um, $29, $30 and 18 colors and then you can always buy a bigger tube of the of any of the colors you run out of like your favorites so it makes it quite affordable to get started i also really love my favorites are m graham and company watercolors and i like them because they're they have honey in them and they um uh they stay moist on your palette really well and i've had those i've been using um those for probably about 15 years and i really like them windsor newton makes a nice um watercolor i like the new core watercolors by golden um, I'm a watercolor floozy apparently because I like them all. <laughs> um, Jason asked, what is a good watercolor pencil to start with? Um, gosh. Well, does uh, Jason, what's your budget? And th that would help me answer that a little bit better. Well, I can have some different options for different budgets. Oh, and what I'm doing here, I just put some more of that pigment on my palette, and I'm side-loading. I'm putting, putting um, paint on the edge, and then I'm just kind of intensifying the colors down in the kind of the shadowy areas, just like I did with the first um, pink that I kind of washed in here. Um, so if you're looking, if you're not sure, if you're not worried about your, your paintings fading, you're like maybe doing it for you doing card making, you don't really care if they fade over time, or you just kind of want to get a feel for it and you're not, you know, you're learning and you're not expecting your first things to be something you're going to want to keep forever. I would recommend the Reeves brand and they're available um, everywhere. They're very inexpensive. You can get a set of 36 for about um, $20 or under and they're great. Also, like there's a brand called Fantasia that sometimes you can find really cheap. I still I think the Breves are probably just as good as those, and they are. They do cost less. Um, Prima is a uh, oh the the downside to Reeves is it's 36. That's it. That's the most they make. So you're not going to be able to be like oh I love these. I want to buy all 72 colors. They don't have all 72 colors. That's it. Um, but they're watercolor pencils, so they blend really well. So you don't really need. 72 colors either. Um, yeah, he says that his um, budget is 30-ish dollars. 30-ish dollars. Um, okay, so I'm going to move this a little bit so I can kind of approach my painting from a right angle. Um, okay, so for 30-ish <clears throat> dollars, you could also, you could definitely get the Reeves. You, I would, you know, for 30-ish dollars, I think I would get the Reeves set, and then I would buy the um, set of Julie Nutting Skin Tones by Prima. Because that's such a great companion set to any other set of watercolor pencils. Um, you get 12 colors, and they're meant for doing skin and hair. So if you want to do any portraiture, it's a great option. I don't know about light fastness because they don't offer that information, which makes me think they're probably not light fast. You could do a smaller set of, um, of Derwent watercolor pencils or the Faber-Castell Polychromos for that price. Like at Jerry's, probably not retail, though. Retail, they're going to be crazy expensive. Um, so, you know, the, the thing about buying a small set of 
watercolor pencils or any color pencils is that if I get the 12 set, like say these, I bought, I had the 12 set of these Aquatones. I can't bring, I have my water bucket on the, on the, uh, the thing, so I can't bring the whole pin over, but I had the 12 set of Aquatones and I love them. So I thought, well, maybe I'll get the 24 set, but if I bought that 24 set, I would have those 12 colors I already had plus 12 more. So I'd only be getting 12 new colors. So that's a thing with, um, with most of these art companies when they sell the sets, you kind of want to buy the largest set you can afford because they each set kind of builds on that other set, so you're going to have duplicates. Does that make sense? Like the first 12 set, the first 12 will be included in the 24, the first 24 will be included in the 36, and so on and so forth. So um, you know what would be a good idea if you're thinking about getting a, like a more expensive artist grade pencil, I would go and uh, buy a few open stock, just order like a couple different colors and different brands and see what one you like best and then invest in a, in a set, like I said, the, the biggest set you can afford. All right. I'm right, going to... It makes perfect sense. Thank you. Oh, good. It's good. Carla, uh, Lindsay, how is the weather in Maine? I'm coming out to visit family for Christmas. Oh, pretty, pretty nice. It's 52 <laughs> degrees out right now. Yeah, uh, foggy this morning, overcast with a little drizzle today, but 52 degrees. So, I, yeah. we're not complaining. No, I don't even know if we're going to have a white Christmas. I When I checked the weather last night, we might get a few snow showers mm -hmm. on Christmas Eve, but nothing that's supposed to really accumulate. Hmm, I'll take it. Uh, I, yep. I travel on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. Well, actually, I don't travel too far on Christmas Eve. You go to your house. Right, right, around now, right, right around the corner. <laughs> right down the road. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the I traveled to my parents' house on Christmas Day. Yeah, it's not the weather. So when I checked, like I said, when I checked it last night, the weather didn't look. It's supposed to be warm and maybe some snow flurries, but nothing. This is maybe an inch of accumulation. So yeah, minor. Yeah, we've had white Halloween, so yeah. um, okay. Well, last year we had, so we had enough snow last year to suit me for the next five years. I yes. think. Yes, definitely. I've actually been working downstairs a bit in my studio because it hasn't been absolutely freezing cold. All right, now we're going to do a side loading technique, but this brush is really too small, so I'm going to use this. It's uh, about three quarter inches wide. It's number twenty uh, Klinsky Mimic Klinsky, so it's the artificial Klinsky. And I'm just going to I'm going to wet my brush, and I'm just let me show you this. I'm wetting my brush, and I'm just scraping off the extra water. I don't I'm not blotting it. I want that brush pretty wet, and then I'm going to lay half of it in the paint, just kind of work it back and forth so that it can suck up a bunch of paint. But it's not going to suck up too much because I got all that water in there. What I want is enough uh, moisture on this brush so that I can go um, along the edge of my water lily here and give it a nice shadow. So I've got my, I'm using the full flat of my brush and I am just kind of painting next to it and it's it's glazing over what I've already put so you want to make sure you have a soft brush to do this otherwise you might end up picking up the color that you have underneath you don't want to, you don't want to lift by accident and I'm working on a Montville paper and that does tend to have a lot of sizing in it so um, I have to be careful about lifting if you're working on arches or a paper with a higher cotton content you wouldn't have so much of that issue because it would absorb more of the color uh, song gal, Lindsay, are you doing a Christmas special card making video? I have quite a few Christmas um, video card videos up this year, and I have um, I don't know if I have a playlist of just Christmas cards, but I have a playlist of Christmas projects, and there are a lot of cards there. Uh, Rufus Ward, what inspired you to start painting? I started really young. Um, I probably more my parents were inspired to get me out of the house because. I was a very active child, I'm sure. I'm going to do the same technique with that smaller brush, and I'm going to do it around my, my drops, my water drops on the water lily. So I've just loaded, I've just put that edge in the, uh, the paint, and I'm just pulling some shadows there. And actually, what I should have did, I should, what I should have did, I should have, uh, done the inside of the drops first. Do the inside of the drops and then do the outside of the drops. I am uh, living dangerously here. I'm doing it backwards. So it already the drops already start to look 3D here, which I think is really uh, kind of a fun, a fun trick to do. Um, let's see. Uh, uh, Guy V, G V. Mm -hmm. I'm probably saying it wrong. Are Creative Color Studio pencils good? 
create create a colors a good brand um i don't have i haven't tried their studio pencils so i can't tell you i say if they were good and you're happy with them then they're a good brand and apparently uh they're they want spe a special day people want a special video that involves christmas card making like a live video or i'm assuming they mean a live video oh i guess i could change my well next next week i have a collaboration with Art Sherpa, um, I could probably change. I was planning on doing a painting, but I could change it to a live card making. The thing is, I like to do larger things when I'm doing a live one, just because it seems like when I try to do ornaments, um, it was hard for the camera to to deal with a smaller image like that. And I just want to make sure everyone will be able to see it pretty well. Uh, Angel Irwin, I have a question. Yeah. Do you find paper that fits the frames, or do you make frames to fit the paper? I make frames to fit the paper. I, I cut mats to fit my artwork into a standard frame, typically. And what's a good paper to use just for practice, not sacrificing too much quality for price? Um, the paper I'm using here isn't expensive. It's a Canson Montville. Um, 140 pound and it's in a block so it's already stretched I don't have to um, really do much to it so I recommend that um, because that is acid free if it comes out great you can absolutely frame it and sell it without worried that it's without worrying that it's going to um, you know fade or deteriorate or anything and by the way I'm just adding a little bit of this a crimson lake watercolor pencil um, on my brush and I'm just defining the uh, shadows in here and the stamens um, Fabriano has a studio line that's pretty good too. It is, um, you can get it in 90 pound or, and a 90 pound is actually fantastic for rubber stamping and card making, or you can get it in 140 pound. And I believe it's 25% cotton. Um, and that's very affordable because you can get a, either a pack of 50, 140 pound sheets or 75, 90 pound sheets for the same price. And I think uh, Jerry's has them for around $20 a pad for a nine by 12 and maybe 27 for an 11 by 14 or 11 by 15. Um, so those are, those are a couple of really good options, but you can't get the, they're not, even if it says block, it's not a block. If it's a Fabriano, uh, first time I bought that, I was expecting a block and that's not what I got. It's a pad. So you will, if it's a 90 pound, you're going to have to stretch it or use it, work in a small size. But that's, I use that a lot for stamping and for, um, uh, students. Oh, and the other thing I use a lot um, that I think is excellent for practice, it's the Canson, no, no, I'm sorry, Strathmore watercolor cards. And you can get a pack of, they come in packs from 10 to 100, and they come with envelopes. And I get the 100 packs because it comes down to about 30 cents a card. And is that what we use at, at your watercolor class? Yeah, yeah, that's what I teach on because it's not as intimidating to have a little card as it is to have like a big sheet of white paper in front of you and you can get it done in a reasonable time. I don't think I could do full size paintings with my not, students. Not with the motley crew that you've got. <laughs> <laughs> well, we only have like, an, you know, we have to be out of there in an hour and a half, yeah. so. Um. Uh, Rhea Brummel, uh, I use Albrecht Durr pencils, mm -hmm. are they good? Oh, they're fantastic. They're uh, some of the best money can buy. And they are some of the most expensive, so <laughs> that's why. Oh, they're great. I have a, I have, I have a set of those. They're, they're, they're wonderful. They're, I'm kind of afraid. I, I don't take them out of the house though because I'm afraid that I'll drop them or lose them or something. Um, uh, Ola, Penny, Penny, what do you think of Ink Tense pencils? I love Ink Tense. I actually, I would put Ink Tense and Albright drawer in the same category, although the Ink Tense are permanent once they dry. And I'm not sure if the drawers are. I haven't tried to go over them to see if they lift, but they're very, very similar. I'd say if you had Ink Tense, you don't need the drawers. I'd say if you have the drawers, you don't need the Ink Tense, though. So one or the other, you don't need them both. Um, now, I want to show you how to do these petals if you don't have a flat brush. Um, I know, like, sometimes you might be traveling and you just have your round brush and your little travel palette. So if that's the case, you can totally do this technique, um, this, get the same look as you would side loading, but you just have to do an extra step and you need to wet the petal first. And this is kind of fun anytime you need to adjust colors and then you can grab your color, whether it's on a pencil or off your palette. And then you just want to put that in the area where you want your shadow to be the darkest and let the water kind of wick it out. So it's not as quick as using the flat brush, but if you're having a hard time with that technique or you just don't have a flat brush, you can go ahead and try that. Uh, Eric S., how is Canson 140, 140 pounds? 
Well, Canson makes a bunch of different um, different lines. Like this is a Canson Montville. Canson also has a paper called 100. Um, Canson has a paper, I think, you know, maybe Strathmore that has Aquarius. Most brands will have several different types, uh, seven different li several different lines of paper. So I need to know what kind it is, what, what's the grade and the line. Because most, most brands also have student grade papers. Um, JPC 13 Art, how are the Karin Doc Luminance colored pencils? I haven't used those, but I bet they're probably pretty good. I don't think Karen Dosh makes a bad um, anything. So I've tried their super color watercolor pencils and they were they were really nice um and they're not even the top of the line top of the line i think is the museum or maybe the luminance i'm not um not 100 sure but i i don't think they make anything they don't do anything halfway in current current dosh all their products are fantastic but they usually are have a large price tag to go with them um let's see uh they also request to do a live acrylic painting video hmm, maybe i will i just oh i don't know what the cat out of the bag but there's a certain mystery box company that um, that has acrylic supplies coming in them. That's all I can say. Oh, I've said too much. Oh, sorry, <laughs> too much. Too much. I forget. This is live. I can't edit it out. <laughs> no, there is no editing it out. Well, I guess I could because I could go back into the YouTube editor, but let's face it, I'm pretty lazy. <laughs> Uh, Janine, uh, 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 Jane, no, oh, Janine, I'm probably saying it wrong. Uh, do you mind if we do any of your tutorials? Are we allowed to sell what we do? Yes. I go really ahead. enjoyed doing the chicken last week. Was hoping to paint along today, but maybe I'll have time to have another go, have a go another day. Absolutely. I have no problem with that because then you can go buy more paints and you can support my fine sponsors. <laughs> <laughs> No, and, and I mean, it's great to ask, though, because not everyone's going to have that same policy. And I can understand that. If somebody makes their living selling or licensing their art, then they kind of have to keep a stronghold on it. Um, but I don't. I, I make my living making YouTube videos. So, you know, go ahead. Have fun. Good luck. And hope you make a lot of money. Uh, Eric S., the Canton 140-pound cold press. Um, there probably should still be like a... Like a lot, like um, like Canton Montville, or like this is Canton Montville, hundred forty pound cold press. But Montville is the specific paper, but it's made by Canton, so it's probably pretty good. I mean, this is uh, this I've had no problem with Canton papers in the past. Abigail Vander Bluesham. My paper is doing weird stuff. I have paper in flocks getting on my brush. Is my paper too wet? Paper in flocks? Do you think she, flocks? Like, like maybe she needs pilling? Paper's pilling? I would say, I think that's probably what she means. Um, I would it's say. Not going over the paper too much. Yeah, going over the paper too much, or it could be the paper is low quality. Like, um, I used to have a student at the senior center, and she would go to the grocery store in the um, stationery section. She would buy her watercolor paper there, and it would pill horribly. But she didn't. I mean, but the work that she did was very abstract. She didn't care, and she just wanted to, you know, have something to put put paint on and you know and she would do a few a few marks and she would be done and that's what art that's what she wanted to do for her art and it worked fine for that but if you were trying to um you know really work on a work a piece for a while it just wouldn't hold up to it so if you're if and, and the reason that happens is because um some papers have really short fibers and some papers are made from longer fibers and when they make paper they use longer fibers first they go into the higher quality paper and all the leftover shorter fibers from what i understand go into the cheaper grade paper so um and those shorter fibers come unwoven and that's when you get that, the pilling and what i'm doing here is i'm just picking up juicy i've mixed up some paint on my palette i'll show you i'll mix up a little bit more so you can see and i'm using the phthalo blue cinnamon cooney she's not here she's uh she's busy today but she would be so proud of my use of phthalo blue that's <laughs> her favorite blue i usually prefer ultramarine so um Kelly Colgrove, question. I have a Grumbacher. Grumbacher? Grumbacher assorted hairbrushes that I bought. The half inch one just doesn't keep its shape. It just keeps the curve when spread the watercolor on the paper. Any suggestions? Just keeps the curve. What, she said it's a flat? 
Um, she doesn't say. She says the half inch one doesn't keep its shape. Um, well, if they're a pony hair, they'll be um, much softer and they won't have the snap. Um, so she might want to choose a um, a synthetic brush, either like the these are pretty these are pretty soft, but they also and observant, but they also keep their shape pretty well. But they're not as snappy as like a um, Aqualon. This is what I really like too, especially for beginners, because beginners tend to get too much water in their paint, and then their paint is really too light and watered down, and then their paper takes forever to dry, and their paints are blending too much. So I recommend the Aqualons by Royal Magnical or any sort of similar brush. Um, let's see, Lowell Cornell has has good ones. The Comfort grip, Comfort Grips from Lowell Cornell are also good. But they're, the bristles are shorter, they're all uh, nylon, they spring back and they hold their shape really well. They hold enough water to get your paint across the paper, but not too much that they're soggy and floppy. So I just think she could just invest in one or two synthetic brushes. You can even like, you can even get them like for, you know, a couple bucks a piece. You don't have to spend a lot of money, but um, I think that'll a lot help of, her. a lot of art supply stores, Michael's, AC Moore, Hobby Lobby, like when the school semester start up, they usually run big sales on their art supplies because they want all the college students to come in and buy their art supplies at the store. So always keep that in mind and they always have coupons. Oh yes, the coupons definitely. And I mean, yeah, sometimes you find brushes in unlikely places. Like, I'm always mentioning Jerry's, but if you just need two brushes, mm -hmm. you might not want to make an order. And I was at this place called, um, I don't know if it's a, I don't know if it, they have these stores everywhere, but it was Ocean State Job Lot, and I got this set of five Princeton brushes, and um, they were like $5.99. There was one more, I can't remember what's up, maybe it was just the four, I can't remember, but these are fantastic, and they were so inexpensive, and, you know, they're going to put the paint on the paper as well as an Aqualon, pretty much in for cheap so you don't have to spend a ton of money just you know maybe take it out of the package give it a little tug on the hair make sure that the you know ferrule's not going to pop off and you, if it's if you're seeing hairs in your hand don't buy it but um i mean brushes have actually gone pretty cheap these days and you can find some really great deals um are those silver and round brushes someone's asking what brushes they were those are rounds and flats. Okay. I don't find, I, I don't use filberts too much in watercolor unless I'm using like a cat's tongue. I'll show you a cat's tongue here. It's, um, it's very similar to a filbert where the ferrule is flat and um, the end is kind of rounded. But if I wet it, I'll show you here. It comes to a nice sharp point. And this is a Princeton uh, cat's tongue brush. I think the Princeton's only come in like two sizes, like a four and a six. Um, Neptune, the Princeton Neptunes come in a, a larger ones, and I really like the Neptunes because they're also a um, faux Kolinsky brush. They work really, really well. Um, I'm trying to see if there's any area on my paper I could show you this. Oh, she's being fine. No, she's trying to eat something off the floor. Oh, gross. <laughs> what could um, be over there? My studio that she wants to eat. Angel Irwin, how do you keep the extra paint fresh to keep it from drying out if you want to save it for another day? Um, with watercolors, you can let them dry out. So there's no, you know, let it dry out and then spritz it with water when you're ready. With acrylics, um, you could put your palette inside of like a palette saver by, Rich, by Masterson. It's basically like a big flat Tupperware container that you can plop your palette into and spritz it with some water and seal it up. Um, some people suggest that you put them in the refrigerator or the freezer, but I really don't. I think once you start freezing paint, you weaken the structure, and I think that it's it's a false economy because if you're painting, if your paint starts lifting or coming off the the um, panel, it, it's gonna you're gonna be very unhappy with that. Now with the the cat's done here, so I can spread. I can push down and spread my bristles up but then I can lift up and get really fine details so that's kind of what's nice about this brush and that's one you're gonna have to pr pretty much buy on its own I don't think they come in sets so um, something to think about if you're looking for that you know one extra thing to bring you up to the free shipping order somewhere or, you know you're just looking for a little treat something different to try I really I really enjoy the cat's tongue brushes Princeton makes uh makes several of them I don't know if any other companies do probably I just not I'm not aware of them all right, I think I just need to do a little bit on the lily pad and we are gonna be about done. I'm gonna grab my, let's see, what do I wanna use? I think I'll use my large flat, three quarter inch flat or so. You can use, use the biggest flat you're comfortable dealing with in this small area. And I think I'm going to just grab a little bit of sap green. 
and just a little touch of phthalo blue just to darken it a little bit. Oop, that's a little too much. So what I'm going to do when I do that, I just start, I put some of the mix over there, rinse my brush and grab the other color. And I'll, I can leave that on my palette and always use it later. So you know, watercolor paint is never wasted. Okay, that's about the right color. And again, I'm going to do the side loading technique. I am going to just side loading technique. Side loading. Uh, so <laughs> the, oh, bottles. Yeah, that's right, the bottles. The bottles. Oh, yeah, my, oh by the way, we have another, another watercolor class coming, but it's going to be um, in the middle of the day at the library. Oh, what day? Wednesday. Wednesday. Yep. Okay. I can do that. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put some veins on the water lily. I'm just going to pull out a few. You just, I just kind of envisioning the center of it somewhere around there. And so I want to kind of make sure I'm pulling my veins from that area. And I think I will add, make it a little bit thicker in there. we we'll pull that color out a little bit. Now you can always soften a hard line. Like I didn't side line. I, I went right in with directly with paint on the whole brush there. But I can um, come back with my damp brush and I can just soften that out. Just be careful not to lift a bunch of the stuff that's underneath, like I did right there, how it's a little bit lifted. So I'm going to go in with my background color, my shadow color, and just dab that in there if that happens. Like I said, I'm using a Canton Montville and it has quite a bit of sizing. So I had to, uh, had to kind of fix that there. And then I want to put a couple rusty spots on the lily pad. So I'm going to go in with a round brush in burnt sienna and just kind of paint a few rusty spots. Maybe tone down that blue a little bit. That was a little bit bright. Um, hey, Lindsay, it's a super tammy girl. I'm wanting to paint on some travel kit soap containers that are smooth plastic and was wondering what paint I could use that wouldn't peel off. Well, first I would I would spray it with some matte acrylic sealer, and that will give it tooth. And then you can paint on it with your regular acrylic paint. I think there's actually a medium too that you can add to your paint to paint on plastic, so you can use whatever your acrylic paint that you normally use, um, and you can just mix the medium in with it. There's also I believe it's plaid, and maybe Martha Stewart make multi surface yep. acrylic paints now. Oh, that's and right. Yeah. I they, they you can do you can use them on plastic oh that's a, yes you can you can use them on plastic glass anything yeah that, that's a good that's a good uh, tip I will say they I have used the Martha Stewart metallic multi-surface and they often need several coats so just keep that in mind you might need to if you're trying to do a one-stroke thing you might need to go in and um, and add an additional coat I feel like I need to break this up a little bit that's a little too strong so I'm gonna take a little yellow ochre because I used yellow ochre at the beginning and some of the sap green and see if I can go in and break that line up a little bit because it's a little too a little too intense. Uh, Benny Chavez, Lindsay, could you talk a little about what watercolor ground is and its uses, please? Yeah, watercolor ground, I believe, is a product by um, Daniel Smith. It's kind of like a gesso, but it's absorbent with watercolors because like a traditional gesso is not going to um, Except watercolors, it'll the, the watercolors will lay on top, and then if you try to paint over it with something, it's going to run. Um, it won't bond. So an absorbent ground has I don't know if it has paper fibers in it or what, but it's got but whatever it is is permanent but toothy, so it'll grab the uh, the watercolor. So it's probably whatever is in like priming a watercolor canvas, like the Fredericks watercolor canvas. Um, so that's what that is, and you can even get like a product called um, I think it's by Creative Mark. Or Jack Richardson. It's um, it's a water. It's like a whiteout for watercolor paper, and they make it to match like the the most popular brands of watercolor paper. So like, if you make a mistake and you and you want to basically put the paper back, it's you can paint it on there, and then you've got it's basically like a layer of paper so that you can paint back onto it again. I'm just tapping in some burnt sienna just to give it a little bit um, more interest on the lily pad, and then we're gonna work on our um, our little dewdrops. Uh, piece 3601, do you matte and frame your own picks or do you have other people do it? 
want a recommendation for a place for Xmas Christmas present I'm making? Um, well, I do my own, but I've gotten out of the business of doing other people's. I used to, that's what I did before I uh, really did the YouTube full time is I would do a lot of custom picture framing. Um, but yeah, I do my own. I have a mat cutter. I have a, I have a couple videos on matting and framing. So I cut my own mats and then I, but I cut them so that I can put them in a ready made size frame. Okay, to lift the highlights out of my, um, my dew drops, and let me just go in a little, little explanation about how the whole, um, how the, well, how the shadows and everything happen. So if my light's kind of coming in from above, but from behind the flower a little bit, so the light's coming in and entering and getting refracted by the water in the dew drop. And the highlight is, it's almost like the water's getting trapped here, and it's creating this highlight, but then the dew drop itself is casting a shadow. So you've got the shadow on the outside of the dew drop, and you've got the highlight on the inside of the drop next to it. So I, what I want to do is lift out some more of that pigment. Because remember, we already shaded the inside, so I'm just going to scrub that. And this is just a short, um, it's called a Maxine's Mop. It's a, it's a short filbert, short bristled hog hair filbert. So I'm going to lift out my highlights there. And these are my secondary highlights. I can actually go go in there, probably go in there with a little bit of yellow ochre, just because it's like I, this paper is so much sizing, I can lift right down to the paper pretty easily. I'll do that over here, too, on this one. I think dewdrops are like my favorite watercolor trick because people see that and like, how'd you paint that? Other than glass? Oh, glass is, one, is another. Maybe I'll put dewdrops. Maybe we'll paint something with dewdrops in our next library. I do free classes at the library for watercolor. And uh, the groans. The groans. groans from all of us. The, the complainers. A bunch of complainers. Yeah, there were a few complainers. So now I'm going to wet these uh, drops. I'm going to put in a little bit of yellow ochre. Time to, like, it's trapped the light and it's kind of glowing a little bit. Could have done the other yellow too, but I, I like the yellow ochre because it's such a pleasing color that's hard to really mess up. And I, think I might just kind of lightly tap it with my, my paper towel just to move some of it. And then so, Macy, yep. Macy guy, Lindsay, what type of hair are scrubber brushes usually made of? The ones made for watercolor. Well, the ones you're going to scrub out with are going to take a lot of abuse, and you really want to hog hair because they they control well, they last forever, and they are um, they're very durable. They'll they'll you can control them. They don't like if you had a plastic hair brush brush, kind of like the kids' watercolor brushes that are just those plastic hairs are horrible. Um, they're going to go every which way and you won't be able to control them. Um, with a, ho a hog hair brush, and the reason I do use hog hair brushes but not Kalinske Sable is because the Sable is from the fur industry, which I think is kind of a horrible industry. And the um, hog bristles come from the meat industry, which not that much better, but I, you know, my family is not, I'm, I'm a vegetarian, but my family isn't. And if I'm purchasing you know, meat for them, I mean, might as well use a whole animal, I guess, it's flawed, it's a very flawed theory, I don't know, but anyway, I do use hog bristles, and, um, but they last forever, and like, my brushes that I use for my children's classes are going to last, and I just feel like it's a little bit better for the environment to have a brush I can keep for five years and keep using than a brush that's going to be toast after six months, and I have to throw away and buy a new one, so, you know, I just feel like that is the least amount of damage to the world, so that's what I, that's what I use, and that's why. All right, I'm going to put a shed. Did that answer the question? No, I completely forgot the question. <laughs> I think you answered the question. Oh, good Lord. Um, all right, now I'm going to go, I'm going to do a little bit more shading around the dew drops, I think, because I'm waiting for them to dry, and uh, I'm just picking up some of the uh, kind of like browns, blue, green color on my palette that I've been using, and I'm just going to just add another layer of shadow, I think. It might not be, you might not need to do it necessarily but I think it might add a little bit. Uh, Carissa Cam Camilla Camilleri. Oh boy. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, Lindsay, what type of watercolor pencil sets do you recommend for beginning watercolorists? Um, well like I mentioned before, I think the Reeves are a good value. Uh, I don't think they're very light fast, but you really can't beat the price and they do wear pretty quickly So I think once you got through a set of Reeves, it's under 20 bucks for a set of 36 then you could advance to like a Derwent or a uh, Or the Albright drawer by Faber-Castell 
or the aqua tones. It just depends. Like the aqua tones, I really like the aqua tones, but if you like to keep your a really sharp point on your pencils, you're going to waste a lot of material here um, because it's all material. I tend to work more with like a blunt end of the uh, of a pencil so this works perfectly for me so you have to kind of figure out whether you're going to be a sharpener or you're going to want to just kind of use it more like a pastel to choose the pencil that's right for you but these actually cost about the same as a high quality regular wood encased pencil so i recommend these um or you know an ink tense by derwent they're a fantastic pencil and uh you know they're very slow wearing they have a lot of product in them there's so there's really lots of good good brands but i think to start off the reeves would be a good beginner beginner pencil. All right, I'm going to grab an exacto knife so I can pull the high highlights out of my dew drops. I think I've got one right here. You can ask me some questions while I hunt around for an exacto knife, if there are any. What's everyone talking about anyway? Um, well, people are talking about work, art that they've been doing, how people, you've uh, got some people to brave watercolors for the first time. Oh, people nice. acrylics. All right, what I'm doing here is just, just cutting out a few little highlights towards the top. These are the high highlights. They're like the, the sprinkles on the top of the ice cream or a cupcake. I guess, you know, well, you could sprinkle ice cream. Uh, but then everyone, we have to eat it. That's the problem. Yeah. Um, Angel Irwin, what it, what's a good watercolor marker pen? I like Copic, Copic, but watercolor. I know they make them. Um, I would go with the Windsor Newton. They're they're fantastic. I'm trying to think. Yeah, their ends are it's brush on one end and bullet on the other. They're a really, um, really good watercolor marker. And she also wants to know what happened to your credit card scraper. I didn't need the credit card scraper because you could use a credit card scraper instead of the. Um, instead of the watercolor pencil to do the veining. Well, I think this pretty much does it for this painting. I'm gonna sign my name on the lily pad. You can do the same, or we'll sign your name. Or Not mine. sign your name, I guess. Oh, maybe. I don't know. I'm not gonna increase its value, I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> and and if they give it as a gift, the gift receiver might be kind of confused. Yeah, that would be, <laughs> who is Lindsay Mae Wyrick and why would I want her painting? <laughs> What's the year? <laughs> 2015? <laughs> uh, Northern Birder. Lindsay, would you talk about how to frame watercolors without using glass? I mean, how to treat the surface so it won't get damaged. You really need to frame it under glass if you want if you if you want it to last. If not, try using acrylics and try you know using a medium with it, like a like a glazing medium or something. If you want to get that look of watercolor and then varnish it. But I think even though they make watercolor canvas, I really think that the structure of watercolor paint will not last if you don't have it under glass. So I would mat it and put it in a frame. Either you can use plexiglass or glass, but um, yeah, it's it's paper. It's work on paper, and it's it's not a permanent binding. The binding is gum arabic, and it is water soluble. So if it gets wet, if it gets you can't really clean it. Um, you, can't if you, dust it. you can't dust it. If you, All that toothiness. Yeah, paper. yeah. I would really recommend trying maybe some acrylic techniques that can mimic watercolor. If you definitely do not want to frame it under glass, or plexiglass is fine. Watercolors can be under plexiglass. It just has to be matted, so nothing is actually touching the surface. And um, if you don't like matting, you can get. Uh, little things to put in between the, the artwork and the glass. They're, uh, I can't remember what they're called, but they're little, just little pieces of uh, wood or metal or whatever, and you just put them on the inside of the frame in, um, in between the glass and the artwork. So you don't have to have a mat, but you're still separated. You know, you still have that separation so the glass won't stick to your art. Yes, spacers. Spacers. Yes, yes, yes. Spacers. Yes. And there, I mean, if you don't want to, and um, oh, and also I wanted to just hop back out because I was, I was getting distracted. I looked on my phone to see what I was dropping. <laughs> hey, good thing I didn't have this on while I was trying to paint. Um, I was just the other other watercolor marker recommendation. Somebody said Tombow. Tombows are great. The only thing, the you know, Windsor Newton's probably the only one that's gonna be a light fast um watercolor marker. But um, if you're not worried about that, Spectrum Aquas are nice. Um the Zig Kiritake uh real brush. Watercolor markers are awesome. Um, it just depends on you know what your what your you know major concerns are. I think the only the only light fast ones you're going to find are probably Windsor and Newton. 
But uh, oh, and yeah, the, the framing, framing is expensive, framing is a pain in the butt. I totally get you, I totally feel you. I have a whole stack of paintings ready to be framed and slightly slid into a clear bag so I could put it in my shop. Um, but yeah, that's my Achilles heel. I don't like to frame. That's why I kind of got out of it for, for uh, business. Yeah. All right, well, there's the finished painting. I hope you guys try it. I hope you enjoy the live show today. And look, we're here at an hour again. That's right. the magic, Yay. magic number. Uh, if you have any, oh, if you could do me a favor and just hop into the comments after the broadcast is over, let me know you are here because I don't get a chance to see the chat after the broadcast um, goes dark. So um, I want to say howdy and see who is here. So just leave a comment and don't forget to like the video. That really helps it get noticed. Thank you so much for watching. Sarah, thank you so much for coming in today. Love it. Had a great time. If you're curious about any of the products I use, you can find them at jerrysartorama.com and there are links in the video description to all the products that I used and I thank them for their generous support. It is because of them that I can keep bringing these shows to you for free every day. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.